All right, VC, it's finally happening. My 45s video. I've got stuff that I found out in the wild, and I've got some VCLT from Dead Wax 66. I've got them broken down into three piles. The first pile we're going to look at is 70s and up. And uh, I'm going to start off with the first police single, which is a reissue from the UK. 1979 reissue. And uh, I was really like, you know, originally released in 77. This came out a couple years later. Now, it's, the picture sleeve is quite different from the original uh, picture sleeve. The, the original picture sleeve is just black and white. It's more plain. It doesn't have the, the green color. It doesn't have the checkerboard or any of that. But it's, uh, this is based, you know, basically on the, the original design. And if you notice, there's no Andy Summers there. He hadn't joined the band yet. Now, I used to be really into these guys in the 80s. I'm not too much of a fan anymore. But to me, this is a great record. Um, it's their best, in my opinion. So it's got Fallout on the A side. And on the B side, it's got Nothing Achieving, which is the closest the police ever got to punk rock. So this is just really cool. Uh, it, it was uh, this is the first variant reissue issued in November of 79. I'll show you the back of the sleeve. So yeah, these are pretty cheap and pretty readily, readily available online. so um, I would definitely recommend this one. This next one is the Rock Hats from 1980, Rockabilly Doll. They were a Rockabilly revival, and uh, it's on the Cattail Records label. 1980, this originally came with a mini poster, which I did not get. Um, I was looking on YouTube for these guys, and they were actually appeared on the Merv Griffin Show. It's a pretty good one. Um, this is a uh, Rocky Erickson and the Aliens UK single reissue on Light in the Attic, uh, Record Store Day, 2013, limited edition, pink vinyl. Um, yeah, I had some frequent buyer points, so I got this for five dollars. Near mint condition. It's got like a. It's got an outer card that kind of wraps around the end of the sleeve right there. So, um, cool. Uh, this is a really good JFA split single. It's got two tracks by JFA. And it's got two tracks by Definger. The JFA side is really good. They do a uh, punk rock version of the Who's My Wife, which is a John Entwistle song. Um, it was released on a Arizona label, AZPX Records, Arizona Phoenix Records. Um, I don't know what the pressing count on this was, but... Um, yeah, it's it's a good one. To, it's a good one, man. I definitely uh, recommend this one. Black vinyl. Uh, this one is Uncle Acid, also known as Uncle Acid in the Deadbeats, and it's Runaway Girls. This is a UK single, and uh, it was issued in 2014. Both tracks are non-album. Uh, Runaway Girls is the the a side non album and then on the on the b side they got devil's work acoustic version now devil's work appeared on the mind control album from 2013 but it's heavy rock and here is just a really cool acoustic uh ballad of it and uh Here's the B side of the sleeve. It's 
you know, these guys, you know, they they only have five singles, so yeah, they don't they don't put out a lot of music, but when they do put it out, it's excellent. Okay, that concludes the first pile. Now the second pile I'm going to show is VCLT. And this is a local Michigan record on the A Square label. This is the same label that put out the MC5 early local stuff. And this is the Rationals, Feeling Lost. And on the flip side, which is the B side, they've got a cover version of Respect by Otis Redding, which would go on to become a national hit on the Cameo label when this was reissued. Now on the on the uh, yeah, the A side, feeling lost, I was reading on um, Discog's comments, and some guy said that on that track, James Osterberg plays bass drum. And uh, James is also now known as Iggy Pop. So he was a drummer, you know, he was in the Iguanas as a drummer. So um, they called him in because they wanted a specific, specific sound for their drum. So um, he did that, so pretty cool. And he sent me another A-Square local record. And it's uh, the Scott Richard Case, which is early SRC. And they do a uh, cover version of I'm So Glad, which is the same song that the Cream covered on their first album. And then the flip side is, uh, who is Who's That Girl? And uh, this was issued May of 67. So really cool, man. I mean, Randy's been sending me a lot of these local uh, A-Square records, among other local Michigan records over the years and uh, I'm getting a pretty nice collection together okay this is uh, the five imp impres um, little miss sad it's pop rock nothing special it's on the gold standard label um, this is actually a reissue I think the original recording was done in like 64 or something like that and uh, this is a re-recording from 1968 of the A side and uh, it was this is a promo gold standard label and it actually came out on promo gold vinyl so that's cool this is an original UK uh, Mitch Ryder and the Detroit Wheels Jenny Takes a Ride uh, this was sold in a U.S. department store bargain bin for 39 cents. It's still sealed in one of those uh, cutout uh, poly bags, you know, that they used to come in. Um, although this is not a cutout record. Um, usually they are, but this isn't. So, yeah, that's kind of cool. Then he sent me a bunch of reissues. And some are reissues and some are like previously unreleased tunes. Um, it's like early rock and roll, like instrumental stuff. Um, this, was, this one was originally released in 1958. Um, the A-side came out on the Fleetwood label. It's a Norton reissue. And I think the B-side is a previously unreleased track by the band. Yeah, all these are really cool. Here's another one that's along the same lines. Jungle Stomp, uh, issued in 2005. And this one is uh, Little Johnny and the Silver Tones, Blood Curdling, unissued 1963 Booze Stomper. Rock till the end of time. Issued in 2008, looks like gold vinyl. Um, this is a Bomp repress. The original was a local record. And uh, it's four tracks. It did have a picture slave originally. 
and uh, this is this is pretty decent. Nothing really great, but uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. It was by a band called Permanent Wave, 1978. Uh, the Romantics. What I like about you. It's a rubber stamp promo. Now in the 80s, I did have this record, but it was a, it's a, it was a real promo. And even the picture sleeve was promo. You looked on the back and it had printed on there, demonstration not for sale. But this is just a stock copy that was made into a promo. So I got that back in my collection again. Great song by the Romantics. Sent me this awesome Ramones bootleg. All revved up. This is a 1987 UK boot. Double 7 inch EP. It plays at 33 and a third and it has all those tracks on it. It's from a radio broadcast. And it even features a little bit of DJ talking on it. Plain white labels. Uh, this is actually an insert. And then let me show you the back of the sleeve. Um, it was recorded in Sheffield, England. So cool. The Loons. Uh, this is 60s Garage Revival from the 90s. And uh, this features uh, Mike Stacks. He founded the Ugly Things magazine, UK magazine, and uh, he was in this band among other bands. He was in the Telltale Hearts in the 80s, and I think he joined, if I remember right, he joined a band in 1981 called the Pilgrims. So he's been around. So, uh, cool. Uh, here's some more garage rock. This is a split single with the Livids and the X-rays. 2013. Now I love this one. This is awesome. The Turns. This is their second record. They only had 245s and then I guess they broke up. This is Doorman. Um, just like you. Cool. I'd love to get their first single. It's like real sort of dreamy, easy listening, psychedelia. Just totally awesome. Okay, that does it for the VCLT. Now we're going to move on to the stuff that I picked up uh, around the town. Yes, folks, that is an Archie's picture sleeve. I don't have the record. This is the first Archie single, if I remember right. And it's from 1968. I love that artwork, just classic. Yeah, well that brings back memories, huh? Then I got some cereal box records too. Now I had this one when I was a kid. I don't know if this is the same song, but uh, it might have been because I think this there was only one song on this record. Oh, well, maybe not. I don't know. I don't remember. I, actually, I think there was several different songs. But it doesn't tell you what song it's going to be like. Uh, like uh, some of them do. So this is uh, this was came on the Super Sugar Crisp cereal box, 1970. And here's another one. Um, this came on Honeycomb, 1970. So that one I don't remember having, but that one I definitely remember having. And this one I don't remember having either. And this is from Alphabets, 
1970. And then I got this monkeys one. Now I had a monkeys record just like this. Now I, I'm, when this came out, I told my mom I want last train to Clarksville. And she, she said she was looking for it and she couldn't find it. So she just grabbed one and the one she grabbed me was Valerie, which is a good song. The other two songs on this aren't any good. I Want to Be Free is this one, which is a Davy Jones ballad. And I'm not a Davy Jones fan. He was good on the TV show, but as a, but as a singer, I'm not too crazy about him. But yeah, so that was, that was cool. And obviously this came out after Peter Tork left, because he's not there. Alphabets, 1970. Okay, this one, I'm going to show some British stuff. The Easy Beats, Remember Sam. That is a non-album track from their second album, Falling Off the Edge of the World. So that's cool. Status Quo, or if you're from England, the Status Quo. Ice in the Sun, and When My Mind Is Not Live. Now the cool thing about this is these are in mono. So on the album, the, these are rechanneled stereo. So uh, yeah, I really want a, a, a mono version of their first album, but you know, just haven't found one. But Cool. August 68. The Kinks, Victoria. Now this was an upgrade for me. Real clean. And it's from October 69. It's from the Arthur album. Brainwash is on the flip side. And uh, Correct Company Sleeve with this. As I was, you know, the other singles, those have the Correct Company Sleeves as well. Uh, so cool. Any any late '60s kink singles are tough to find. They just didn't sell well in the U.S. Uh, Hot Legs, Neanderthal Man. You know that was an international hit. And um, that has even appeared on Beetle, old Beetle bootlegs. You know, claiming that it was the Beatles. And uh, so actually, it's early 10 CC. It's got the non-album track. You didn't like it because you didn't think of it. Godly Cream and Stewart. Okay, here's the national release of that rational single that I showed. Now for the national release, Respect became the A-side and became a, somewhat of a hit here in the United States. It's, it's got the uh, the original B, the original A side that got it on the uh, B side, so that's the that's the track that's got Iggy on it. And uh, I found this like a month after I got the one from Randy. Isn't that weird? Cause you just never see these, and then all of a sudden I find one. It's <laughs> so weird. October of '66. Right, this one's really, this was a really cool find. And there's a story behind it that I will tell. It's Bob Seger in The Last Herd, Heavy Music Part 1 and Heavy Music Part 2. And it's one of the later uh, Bob Seger in The Last Herd's 45s. And the story is on, the, on this is after it came out, it didn't really do much. And then it started to be becoming a, a local Michigan hit. And uh, people were calling the, the uh, radio station, hey, where can I get that record? I can't find it in the stores. And uh, so Bob heard about it. And he went, he actually went over to um, the Cameo Parkway offices. And as he walked in, they were in the process of moving everything out of the building. They were closing down the label. So there were no other further pressings of this. So it evidently, it seems to be quite rare. 
Um, it's not worth like a ton of money, but um, they are they are collectible. And on the B side, he actually mentions the band SRC, and he mentions the band. Is it NSU? Which was a band in Europe, and if you look at the first Cream album, there's a track on there by that name. And I've always wondered what that meant. And evidently, it was a European band. So, um, yeah, it's weird that they, he mentions them on this, but SRC is definitely mentioned. So, um, cool. Now, this one I got in the Antique Mall for $0.69. Cents. Nice shape. It's a promo of Lightning. And... Uh, it's got Zippy Kaplan on it um, from The Litter. Um, this was his band. He was the lead guitarist. Now, I do have the album. Um, so, yeah, it was cool to get the 45 here. The, this is a promo. And both tracks are on the album, but these are edited single versions. Uh, this is the Jester's Run, Run, Run promo copy on Soma with the original sleeve. And uh, if you have Nuggets comps, you probably are familiar with that track. Just killer. And for when it came out, it's pretty amazing. October of 64. And when you listen to it, you wouldn't think that it, it sounds more like 66 or something. Um, it seems to me is on the flip. Um, really awesome. Uh, this, these guys were out of Minnesota, if I'm correct on that. So cool.